Welcome back to SnowRunner, guys, and in this video, we're going to be taking a look at a new Ford Bronco mod. This isn't really a vehicle that a lot of modders have kind of dived into, but I'm really curious to see how this vehicle actually looks, how it drives, and what's interesting is the creator actually said on mod.io that it wasn't working on the main build of the game. He said it was only working on PTS, but I was actually able to get it to work on the main build of the game just fine. It gave me an error upon my first download, but then all I did was I re downloaded it and it seemed to work fine so here I am using it on the main game now obviously it is branded so in this form it would not be console friendly but who knows what might happen in the future and who knows if he might uh kind of have the idea of doing a console friendly version so without any further ado let's go ahead and jump into this thing and see what kind of customization features we have and then we're gonna of course take it out and test it here on the stadium super trucks map so let's dive into it pick it up and in-game, it comes in at $67,110. Kind of an odd amount with the 110 especially. But also, as you can see, it is accurate to the real one with the IFS uh, up front and the live rear axle in the back. So let's go straight into the customization. Now, we have a 2.3 liter EcoBoost here as our base engine, which gives us an A- power to weight rating. Or we can move up to a 2.7 liter EcoBoost, which gives us a S plus power to weight rating. I think you guys know which one we're going to go with. Now, gearbox-wise, we have stock, freeway, and snow runner. We're going to go with the snow runner gearbox on this build. And suspension-wise, we have high, and we also have high. So, I'm going to go with the slightly higher suspension. I mean, it's not, like, all that much higher. It's not higher by much, but it's just enough that I feel like it might actually give us kind of a benefit on some of these obstacle courses. And tires-wise, you start off with a 43-inch Toyo Open Country, and they're actually all considered 43-inch, but I don't know if that's actually accurate to the way the tire size displays. But you do have a Cooper Discover. You have a, well, you have, these are literally just called new tires, but they kind of look like a Mickey Thompson Baja MTZ. You also have Maxxis Trepidors. You have new tires, too. You have, let's see, Creepy Crawlers, and you have KM2s. You also have Nitto Trail Grapplers. I'm going to go with the KM2s, because I actually really like how they look. And then, whoa, there was more to go. Hold on. Autonomous Scout, for sure. And then, spare wheel-wise, let's see, ooh, so you could do a spare wheel Ford. I'm not quite sure what the... Oh, so it's like the Ford wheel. And then... Oh, I see. So basically different types of... Different types of wheels basically on the spare tire holder. So you have kind of like a Method Race wheel here. You have a Black Rhino wheel here. I'm going to go with the Black Rhino wheel because I do plan on putting those on the actual main wheels and tires. So we'll do that. And then we're going to do the engageable diff lock. And then as far as frame add-ons go, this is where it gets really interesting. So you actually have hardtop A and hardtop B. So if you wanted to do, say, for example, just the rear section of the roof, but leave the front section off, you could do that, which I kind of like because it gives you a lot more of a good range in terms of like the way you can mix and match customization parts. But I'm going to go with the full roof on this one. And let's see, we could do actually, ooh, KC light bar up there. That's pretty sick. Front rack, what's the, oh, I see, so it's like a little bit of a, kind of almost like a bar to put extra light bars or light pods on. Now, miscellaneous wise, you have a Badlands grill and you also have a Big Bend grill. I'm going to go with the Badlands grill for this build. And doors wise, you have doors and then door with hole. Now, whichever one you want to go with is obviously completely up to you. I'm going to go with the standard door, but also what's cool about it is actually that these doors have the window down, whereas these have the windows up. So actually, I don't know. I might actually go with these. I think they look kind of cool. Now, rooftop-wise, wait a minute. That light bar, that light bar says roof LED bar, but as you can see, it is very clearly right in front of the actual grill, so... A uh, little bit of an odd naming strategy there. So let's see, uh, Bumper Bronco 1 and 2. I think I'm going to go with the uh, the second. Well, uh, I don't know. I don't know. This one looks like it might provide for just a tiny bit more clearance. So we'll definitely go with that. And I'm going to go with these Black Rhino wheels. And uh oh, oh, that doesn't look right. Oh, that doesn't look right. Let me see, now that I've switched to those, I might have to go back and change the tires to something that actually interfaces with that wheel properly. And it looks like the Toyo Open Countries do. So we'll do that. We'll, we'll throw the Toyo Open Countries on there. I'm sure the actual, you know, the actual grip levels aren't that different. 
So now we're going to go into the colors, and I do really like this yellow, but there's a really good range of colors on offer here. I really like the blue. I like the red. There's a couple different shades of red. This one's just a little bit deeper than this one. And then you also have a couple of different, like, gray colors ranging from dark to lighter all the way up to kind of like, this is like almost like an off-white. And then you have a really bright red, dark blue, and this one's kind of like a bluish gray. So it really is up to you in terms of what you want to go with. I'm personally going to go with the lighter blue. I like that a lot. And then... The coolest part about this whole thing to me is you can actually put a GoPro on the dashboard. How cool is that? Like, who thinks of actually making an in-game add-on for your vehicle that's a GoPro that goes on the dash? But what's the what is really cool about this is the fact that the new actual Bronco has a little bar up there that is literally built so it adapts straight to a GoPro mount, like straight to a GoPro adapter mount. That is the coolest thing that he actually included that in this vehicle as a detail. I love that. So now, getting it out of the garage for the first time, those black rhino wheels look sick. But if you go into first person view, it, the story just gets even more wild. Now, his hands don't exactly line up with the wheel correctly, but that's really the only gripe that I have about this interior because everything else is, like, super highly detailed. I mean, you've even got, like, the seat belts there on the back seats. You've got everything up here detailing the top. You've got the dash. You've got the actual, like, sort of entertainment center right there. And as far as the GoPro goes, it looks so cool because it's literally, like, a modeled GoPro mount and everything. Like, it's so freaking cool to me. So now... Now, let's go ahead and fire it up and see how it actually drives. Now, since we're out on Stadium Super Trucks, I do want to take it to the big jump and just see if it can hit it real quick. Now, in order to do that, let me go ahead and switch to the highway gearbox just to kind of make my chances a little bit better because that does add an extra sixth gear in automatic mode. I mean, it seems like it gets up and goes pretty well, though. Like, it's not all that crazy fast in the lower gears, but, like, once you start getting up to, like, fourth, fifth, sixth gear, it's pretty quick. So there's fifth. Take sixth. Come on. There's sixth. Let's go! Yes! Dude, it actually didn't even get any damage at all. Oh, my God, the brakes are not very... I've, I have... I was on the brakes there for a good, like... I don't know, like five, six, seven seconds. But now, let me recover back to the garage and we'll throw the, let's see, the, the SnowRunner gearbox back in it. And now we're going to take it to a little bit more of an obstacle course and see what it can do out there. But before we do that, I do want to see what it's like in some proper mud. Pretty good so far. Let's actually put it in low plus, throw the lockers on. It's definitely got a little bit more of a vanilla game feel to it, which I feel like a lot of people are actually going to like. But one thing's for sure, it would definitely need a lot of adjustment if it were to become console friendly. Because as it is right now, this is very c clearly branded and very clearly a PC only mod. So let's make our way down through this mud. And it's actually doing really, really well. I do love the way these new Broncos look. And I know a lot of people are really back and forth on the fact that they chose a independent front suspension, whereas the, obviously, its main competition, the Jeep Wrangler, has a solid front axle. But, you know, when you think about it, and you think about how far a lot of companies have been able to push the capabilities of independent front suspension off-road, I mean, it is a viable option. It really, truly is a viable option. I mean, there are there are axle companies out there that make, you know, they, they basically make axles for independent front suspension off-road vehicles that they warranty their axles up to a 40-inch tire. They wouldn't be warrantying axles up to a 40-inch tire if, like, independent front suspension didn't work at all off-road. I'll tell you that. So now, we're going to give it a little bit of a run on the test track. We're obviously not going to time it because this is our very first time taking this thing out here. But I am really curious to see how it does when you really start throwing it at some obstacles. Whoa! It's got a lot of travel, though, in the front. It's definitely not lacking in the flex department. It actually does a really good job kind of scrambling through here in high. I'm really impressed. High range is actually faster than I thought it was going to be with the SnowRunner gearbox, too. Dude, there you go. This thing rips. This thing absolutely rips over the rocks. I love it. Absolutely enjoy the way it... Oh, God. Whoa. Yo, I'm actually surprised it didn't, di like, get any front-end damage on that. Especially, like, engine damage. It's going to pick up engine damage here. I was like, oh, yeah, it's definitely going to pick up engine damage here. Absolutely. Now, once we get... Wow, it's picking up engine damage on every single log through there. So, duly noted, it doesn't like that obstacle. Definitely not. 
but granted also I could have gone a lot slower and prevented that, so, you know, it's kind of a give and take with that one. It is really easy to get it into high, though, even going up hills, which I really love. Like, I love the fact that it's easy to get it into high range. Let me see if I can... Whoa! And right into the... Okay, that was weird. I was like, let's see if it'll do a little bit of a jump over the cars. And it actually caught the rear axle in a very strange way. It will fit, like, exactly on these shipping containers, though, which is perfect. Yeah, once it gets up into 5th, I mean, you could probably take this thing to some dirt racetracks and have a lot of fun with it. Because that's the other cool thing about the independent front suspension is that you could take it on trails and crawl with it. Or you could also do some high-speed off-road stuff with it and it responds pretty well to that as well. As long as you're not going over, like, really harsh obstacles like logs. These I would definitely recommend going over diagonally, but it's handling them really, really well. Especially for the way the mod is set up, I would definitely say it's handling them well in my book there you go now I do think the suspension tuning could be worked on a little bit maybe the damping could be worked on a little bit but that's like very very minor stuff so I wouldn't worry about that I would think that's just more of like a personal taste thing on my part oh man it took a lot of engine damage on that one though running into the barrels Ooh, easy yeah, obstacles like this are definitely not its favorite, although I'm really curious to see how it will do on the balance test. Now, the balance test is a weird one. It's a very weird type of course, but there are some trucks that do really, really well on it and some trucks that do absolutely terrible on it. So let's see how you do out here. It might be better geared to this. We never know. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Boom, boom, boom. Not bad. All right. Now, the short wheelbase is actually really going to help it going over these barrels because it's not going to have to worry about... Oh, the brakes are not good. The brakes are not good. You have to, like, give yourself a bunch of extra distance to slow down because, like... Oh, man. That was, that was totally my bad there, though. I let it slip off the ramp right at the last second. But, yeah, you definitely have to give yourself some extra room when braking because... Oh my god, the brakes are sketchy. Super sketchy. It's got a lot of grip on these uh, on these wood bridges, though. It's doing really well through here. I'm going to just put it in automatic for this part because it really doesn't need to be in anything else. Now, the upcoming flex test, though, I don't know if we're going to make it past that because that's like, that's... That's something that even, like, a lot of crawler rigs will just slide right off of. So, the biggest thing here is keeping a steady pace without falling either in the middle or over the edge. Oh. Whoa! It was able to do it! Holy crap, that's amazing. Now it just has to do this last bit right here. Oh, oh there it is. There it is. It was such a big, like, variance in actual height that it just completely slid right off. It was like, nope, I have had enough of that. Oh, nope, yep, that was my bad. Yep, I tried to quick winch it there, and that was a big mistake. But at the end of the day, this thing is definitely going to be a really, really interesting vehicle to use in campaign maps, um, especially if you're doing a modded campaign playthrough. I think you could really slot this into a modded campaign playthrough as a really good looking scout vehicle. And if you guys enjoyed this video and enjoyed testing out this mod with me, make sure to let me know all your thoughts and opinions on it in the comments below. Hit that like button if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you guys next time.